Oh, this is. Well, uh, it's where they were doing the music video for all the oh, presents okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. What we do is we take the audio, play it on air, and then we have these little videos online too. Okay. So, here with Rich Lerner, the guru of the Golf Channel. Tell me about your your uh, surprises and and your expectations for the first annual Humana Challenge versus the fiftieth Bob Hope Classic. I used to love this event. Uh, first of all. When it was in its heyday in the 1970s, I was a, a teenage boy, an impressionable teenage boy, and I used to watch uh, the Bob Hope Texaco Star Theater, and he might have on, like, say, Adrian Barbeau. You're too young to know who she was. Or how about that Joey Heatherton? Isn't she something? That's a, a very poor Bob Hope impression right there. <laughs> but Joey Heatherton was, uh, was attractive as well. Uh, so... Unfortunately, I don't think they played in the Hope, but, but I, uh, I was a huge fan of Bob. I loved uh, this event in its day. It had a little sparkle. People seemed to shine in the desert sunshine here. Um, it had less of a corporate feel, mm -hmm. a little more of a Vegasy mm -hmm. feel. It wasn't Wall Street. It was kind of a uh, few stiff shots mm -hmm. on the golf course and off the course, mm -hmm. right? Uh, one liners were as welcome as one putts at yeah. this tournament and the landscapes changed uh, obviously I, I don't think um, you know being a star is not quite what it used to be mm -hmm. uh, in, in that um, golf may have invented the the genre of, of celebrity involvement in, in another endeavor um, but now we have celebrity poker, we have Dancing with the Stars, Donald Trump fires celebrities, and, 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 and it, it's big ratings. And, and the, the years ago, just as a sort of a way to maybe explain you know, what's happened to this event, which was really a beloved, cherished event for many, many years, um, years ago, um, a star was a star. There were three networks, ABC, NBC, CBS. Mm -hmm. Fox wasn't on the radar. Uh, and Bob Hope may have had an audience of, say, 30 million people watching him. And if he had uh, Frank Sinatra on that show and then uh, announced to his audience of 30 million or whatever it was, it was big, that, hey, this weekend we're going to be in the desert playing some gaff. That audience, even if they didn't have any interest in golf, they followed, they followed Sinatra, who Burt Lancaster, all these mm -hmm. great stars that at one time played in this event. They followed them to NBC for the weekend for hits and giggles here in the desert. Uh, now we have, what, a 500-channel cable universe. Uh, we have internet. We have iPhones. That audience is, is fragmented. It's splintered. It's all over the place. And so stars, just to the original point, they don't aggregate the eyeballs that right. they, they once did. That audience of 30 million, what is it? Maybe it's, it's 2 million people, and they're, they're recording Mad Men on AMC. Uh, while they're on Twitter or something else. So, so being a star is not quite what it, what it used to be, but I, I think there's some value in it. I think it helps the sport uh, if Morgan Freeman shows up as he, or Lucas Black shows up and, and he's having fun out on the golf course. Uh, that tells people who may be lukewarm or, or, or have no interest in the sport, well, it looks kind of fun. Maybe, I, maybe I'll, I'll get involved. Uh, I think that's good for the game. Uh, but but I think uh, for for some other reasons this tournament had kind of uh, run out of gas. Um, it's a very competitive landscape. Uh, of, uh, for professional golfers, they can go play as many will as Tiger will next week in another desert in the Middle East and get appearance money to play there. So you're fighting appearance fees. Um, there are World Golf Championship events now, so players have more options, the better players, and they have to begin to take a look at their schedule. They can't play every week, and so they say, well, something needs to go. They were five rounds here forever. Mm -hmm. Players talk, and they might leave this event and say, you know what, man, it's, it's, it's kind of a drag, five rounds. I have to play with three amateurs. The rounds are slow. No knock on the amateurs, but it slows down the it's day. Okay, so 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 they they ran in it's a, they ran into reality here, and they had to do something. I think they've hit a home run. Okay. I mean, I think they've hit a home run. You have a strong sponsor in Humana. Mm -hmm. You have one of the most famous 
individuals on the planet, former president, yes. uh, who, who's now very actively involved. He's not just a figurehead. He's, he's, he knows what's happening and what needs to be done. Uh, and already, you know, he's picked up the phone and called Phil Mickelson, mm -hmm. uh, Greg Norman, uh, and, and other guys have followed, Dustin Johnson and Matt Kuchar. And so it, it, they had to improve the quality of the field. They've done that. I think it was paramount that they get Mickelson back in the fold. Mm -hmm. He hadn't played here since 07. He didn't like the, the golf courses. They fixed that. Uh, getting Mickelson back was, was critical. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it says, okay, we're healthy again, we're vibrant again. And so I think, um, I think there's, there's some buzz and some momentum and it, it, it feels, feels, as somebody just told me, it feels a little bit more like a, a, a golf tournament versus a hit and giggle uh, with the celebrities. And that was wonderful for all those years. Mm -hmm. I personally love the event. I think a lot of people do. And I think uh, we're all happy that it, it has survived. And if the name has changed, then some of us will slip and call it the hope. Mm -hmm. um, the, the spirit's still here. So it kind of I replaced, right? <laughs> well, it was excellent. I mean, it kind of replaced this sizzle and the sparkle of the stars with legitimate golf as the paradigm, rather than it being something that everyone comes and has fun and comes to see the, the stars. They come to see the legitimate golfers. And of course, we have Anthony Kim, our local guy, finally back. He used to be in Dubai, and it would break our hearts that he was going overseas when he could play here locally. So you think that really the Humana influence has brought the better golfers here? I, I think the change in format. I don't want to minimize Humana. There wouldn't likely be a golf tournament if, if Humana didn't step in. Uh, I like their theme, it, it, uh, health and wellness. I think that's important. Uh, but I think uh, the change in format uh, was important in, in attracting the professionals. Again, uh, instead of playing alongside three amateurs, it's now one, makes your day a little bit more enjoyable. If you're trying to focus on hitting that five iron, uh, 192 yards to a back right hole location, you, you need to be dialed in. Uh, and then and I, I think uh, the uh, five rounds to four helped. Uh, I think over the course of the last few years, they've uh, uh, begun to narrow the focus in terms of where it's played. We have uh, two golf courses at one location. The Palmer and the Nicholas courses are, are right here at PGA West, uh, not spread out all over the place. Golf courses are very playable, and uh, I think those are probably the, the, the reasons why the players are coming back. And now they, the tournament will hope that word of mouth will lead to more players in the future. Uh, coming back, coming uh, into the fold. And more celebrities likely as well? Yeah, I, I would think a phone call from President Clinton might move some people. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's well connected in Hollywood and, and pretty much every other place. Uh, so I don't know that the focus will be on more celebrities, but, but quality celebrities, mm -hmm. a, if you can, A-listers. Uh, so it's not quantity, it's quality. And you know there there are guys who A-listers who play play golf, uh, George Clooney, Matt Damon, uh, Mark Wahlberg. They've been for whatever reason reluctant to step out into the spotlight, uh, you know, and, and play golf. Maybe it's not their comfort zone. Maybe it doesn't fit the, their brand. Whatever the reason, maybe they just may not want to. They're comfortable playing golf in private wherever they play it. Uh, but. You know, in a perfect world, you'd, you'd like someday to maybe see a Clooney step in. And I, I wonder if, if Clinton has that in mind, uh, the president, I should say. Uh, I don't want to be disrespectful. Uh, yes, but, uh, I mean, good start. Uh, Morgan Freeman just won the Cecil B. DeMille Award at the Golden Globes, one of the, the great actors of, of the last quarter century. And Lucas Black is good, and Billy Crudup. I mean, these are you know, very talented people in their, in their own right. And... Uh, you know, I always thought there was good synergy between uh, professional golfers and, and celebrity entertainers, uh, athletes, uh, in that I think they, they both know what it's like to be measured, either by the score on the card or by uh, the ticket sales, television ratings, uh, the score uh, on the, at the end of a football game, whatever it is, they know the pressure inherent in, in, in being measured. And they know what it's like, uh, you know, to be on, on your game, on stage, whatever it is. So I still think it, I think it works. And I, I know that the celebrities admire what the, the tour pros are able to do. Mm -hmm. There aren't many people who can 
hit uh, a driver 310 yards on a line. Uh, and, and I know that the, the golfers are, you know, tuned in and, and, and they vibe what the, the celebrities uh, do, whether it's music or, or acting or, or uh, playing ball. 2011 in the game of golf was rather remarkable. I mean, you had guys like Rory just really explode, but no one really established themselves as a dominant presence. Do you think that's going to happen in 2012? Or as a guy who covers golf exclusively, do you kind of like the variety? I like the variety. I would like to see a rivalry develop. I'd, I'd love to see. It doesn't necessarily have to be Tiger. Uh, it would probably be pretty entertaining if it were Tiger and Rory at two of the four majors this year, you know, tied with four holes to go at the Masters or the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. who, who doesn't want that? Decent but but Decent. Rory but Rory and Ricky or Keegan and Webb, uh, I mean, there are any, any number of possibilities. And I do think, uh, I, I think there are more good players now uh, than there have been in a long, long time. I think it, I'll be curious to see how Webb Simpson and Keegan Bradley, uh, Rory McIlroy respond to Tiger at his best. Mm -hmm. I think Tiger's on his way back. I don't think he'll win as he did 10 years ago, seven, eight events a year, uh, winning majors by a dozen shots. I don't, never put it past the guy, but I don't think you're going to see that. I do think he'll win. And I think he's healthy of mind and body, mind being paramount. Um, and I'm curious to see how uh, the, the younger players react if they get into that uh, situation. I would point to last year's Masters, and Tiger made an old Tiger charge. When he made the eagle at number eight, I mean, the, the place came unglued. Uh -huh. And it was old Tiger. Mm -hmm. um, they, just came, they just came at him and in waves and there was no back off in, in, in any of the half dozen to ten guys who were lighting it up there on Sunday afternoon so I think uh, I don't think uh, the young guys were, were scarred by Tiger the way Ernie and, and, and some of those guys were Sergio uh, I, it's a pretty pretty good time in the game 2012 a lot of pundits are, are, are feeling could be really pretty extraordinary Maybe. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 I haven't heard that word, but uh, I may have just made it up. I did you know. just? <laughs> what's, it, what's your favorite club in your bag? Ooh, uh, I swing my umbrella much better <laughs> than I swing my driver. Uh, I, I swing it in airports uh -huh. very well. <laughs> only, totally. only now and then do I poke somebody in the eyeball. Uh, but uh, my best club. <laughs> I've been driving it fairly well of late. Uh, my iron play's been a little shoddy. I'm, you know, the, the pros tell me I'm swinging the the handle, not the club head. I'm not releasing. Huh. Huh. Kind of hang. I, I hang back a little. I'm a tall guy who gets back and tilts a little bit that way. Um, putting okay. Uh, maybe hit my irons a little bit crisper. And my short game is is awful. Right now, Frank Frank Navalo, my uh, my broadcast partner, will attest to that. Uh, I'm a, I have a little sort of chip yip thing working, which is not it's no fun to play with. Yeah. So yeah. anyway. So you don't actually have a specific club other than your driver. That's the one. I would that say driver. You're gonna you're gonna go to you're gonna start at the tee with confidence, and then it's all downhill from there. Well, it's not all downhill. I mean, I can scrape it, but I, my favorite club right right now wasn't always the case. But my favorite club right now, I would say, is my driver, which is nice. It's, you know, anybody who plays golf knows it's oh, yeah. it's nice to be friendly with your your yeah. driver. Nothing like crushing <laughs> one off the tee. Exactly. Thank you so much, Rich. It's a Thank pleasure. You, Julie. Thanks. Enjoy your time out here.